Today I wanted to show you how to fill out the Dozenal Multiplication Table. We will need to know our multiplication table to be able to multiply larger numbers as well as do long division. So I'm going to try to run through this table in a manner that is easiest to learn, starting with the ones. One times any number equals that number, so we can quickly fill in this column. And if you look, we've already done every even number, so that's the first six multiples of two. We can see they end with two, four, six, eight, deck, zero. And that pattern continues for the next row. I think it'll be easier to go to the fours next. We've already done the first few fours, since every other two is a multiple of four. And we can see there's another pattern that emerges here, four, eight, zero. And so just repeating that, we've got the entire fourth row. And we might as well do the eighth row next. Every other four is an eight, so we've already got the first six completed. And again, we see another pattern here, eight, four, zero. It is patterns like these that would make it easier for somebody just learning to count to learn dozenal. After the row of eights, I'm gonna go ahead and skip down to the row of does, since they will all just be the same number with zero following it. Now let's look at the three, six, and nines. The row of threes repeat the same pattern, three, six, nine, zero, and then the dough place increments by one. So we can very quickly fill in this column. When looking at the sixes, it alternates six, zero, six, zero. This is very similar to how the multiples of five work in base 10. If we look at every third number on the row of threes, we see we've already got the first four nines done, and we can see a new pattern emerge, nine, six, three, zero. This is the exact opposite pattern we noticed with the threes. There is still one last row that has an easy pattern, the L's. We can multiply L by any single digit number, and the left digit will be one less than that number, and the right digit will always be do minus that number. And this means that those two numbers will always add up to L. This is very similar to the nines trick you probably learned in grade school. If we were all born with 12 fingers, we could use a very similar trick to multiply by L. So now we have three rows left the fives, the sevens, and the decks. And there's not really an easy shortcut for these numbers like there are for the rest. However, since multiplication is commutative, we've actually already done most of these. So I'll go ahead and fill in the rest. Now we have a completed table. If you wanted to learn how to multiply larger numbers in Dozenal, I would strongly suggest trying to memorize your multiplication table. Next week I'll be using this table to show you how to multiply larger numbers. And the week after that I'll be showing you how to do long division in Dozenal. Thank you.